Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to part 5 of this in-depth start to finish tutorial of the French Bulldog. So this is actually the final part where I'll just be finishing off the body. I'm still using the extra white hot press Fabriano Artistico paper and I'll still be using a mixture of the Faber-Castell Polychromo colour pencils and the Caran d'Ache Luminance colour pencils. So I've just covered the pug on the right hand side just so it won't smudge when I'm drawing the French Bulldog and I'm just going to move this down slightly so you can see what I'm doing on the kind of neck and the body area. So like I did with the cream fur up here, I'm going to use the shade Buff Titanium which is a luminance pencil. Also please ignore my finger, I paper cut it and it looks a little bit disgusting. Um, it really hurts but I'll try and cover it. <laughs> So I'm going to start with this Buff Titanium Luminance Pencil as a base layer and literally apply this with a light to medium pressure um, everywhere really where I can see that kind of beige cream fur. And you kind of want to use the bluntest part of the tip just to get a bit of a softer line and a bit more of an even coverage. So I'm using these initial outlines as a guide, just kind of mapping out the basic areas and shapes within this kind of body section. I'm just going to have a look at the black pug for a minute on the right just to see how far I can go down with that body so we want everything to be in line especially when you're drawing like a multi-subject portrait just looks a little bit more professional when everything's kind of um, in line like the eyes and the bottom of the bodies and the top of the heads so now that I know that it's kind of down here I'm just going to make a little mark at the bottom of the body on the French Bulldog so I know where to kind of draw down to. like that and then I'm going to add a little bit more of a vibrant kind of yellowy colour by using the shade Olive Brown 10% which is a luminance pencil um, and remember that the 10% just means how saturated or how vibrant that colour is so I'm going to use this where the kind of subtle shadows are and just to kind of deepen some of those beige tones
So kind of along those subtle creases in the fur. I'm just lightly shading where those shadows are as well. With the shade Primrose, I'm just going to add a touch where those brightest kind of creamy yellows are. And this is kind of going to act as an undertone for this beige fur. So at these initial stages, you always just kind of want to block in that colour and figure out where all your shapes are. Um, that's the kind of easiest way to break it down, really. Like that. With the raw umber 10%, I'm also going to kind of darken some of these lines some of these wrinkles and kind of darker shadows. So we can kind of separate those shapes a little bit more and really visualize that body coming together. So even though I'm focusing on building up that tonal value and kind of visualising where all the shapes are in the body, I'm still kind of doing these back and forth motions, leaving little gaps in between to kind of build up that fur-like texture right from the beginning.
really look at the direction of the fur as well even if it's a really subtle change um, it's still quite important and especially kind of in the middle it's almost going in loads of different directions kind of going above all the ridges and kind of bumps in the structure of the kind of neck and the shoulders and the chest area I'm also just briefly going to add a touch of the shade pink white to kind of warm up some areas of that fur and this is like a really pale pinky tone and it's also just going to help to kind of merge these colours that we've got down already together and just blend that out a little bit. I'm also going to go in with the light beige Pablo pencil, which I also used in parts 1, 2, 3 and 4, um, mainly just to build up more of that tonal value in that cream fur. Now, the Pablo pencils are kind of like in between the polychromos and the luminance. They're not as hard as the polychromos, but they're not as soft as the luminance. Um, so it's kind of like a nice in-between pencil. Um, I don't use these often, but I do have a few colours like this one, um, which are kind of perfect for this particular colour of fur that I'm trying to achieve. So I'm just using this to kind of build up this darker beige fur right underneath the chin area, kind of the start of the chest. To start darkening areas of the fur, I'm going to go in with the warm grey 5 polychromo. I'm going to start in the centre of the chest, which is quite dark, directly under the chin. And just get some of that dark pigment down. Now the warm grey has like a slight brown tint to it, so especially when it's layered over quite a few pale kind of creamy colours, it does really bring out that kind of um, almost like a mousy brown, uh, but it's still quite a neutral colour, so it's good for kind of blending and just building up that tonal value.
So it should look something like that, where the middle of the chest is looking a little bit darker and we've kind of mapped out where all those darker shadows are and darker bits of fur, um, you know, around the neck area. And I've constantly drawn in the same direction as the fur as well, even if it's like a subtle direction change, I've really paid attention to that. It can kind of show the structure of the body underneath, so um, yeah, paying attention to that's quite important. So yeah, should look something like that. And then I think I'm going to go in with the dark sepia, which is the darkest of the brown shades of the polychromos. And just go over some of those darkest areas. Just to really start adding some depth and creating a bit more of a contrast between those light and dark areas. So I'm just kind of doing back and forth motions and just keep layering on top of each other until it kind of smooths out. Um, and at the end of each line, you kind of want it to be quite wispy and light. So it kind of merges with the rest of that paler fur. I'm going to go in now with the shade B straight just to kind of bring out some more of those creamy yellowy tones in that beige fur. This is going to really kind of deepen that colour because it's quite like a golden dark yellow colour almost. Um, so it's going to blend quite nicely with that creamy colour underneath which is a lot paler but also just brings some of that more vibrant kind of colour back up to the surface. 
And at this point as well, I'm still using the bluntest part of the tip just to get a bit of a softer line and a bit more of like an even coverage over the top. Even just by doing these kind of back and forth lines in the same direction as the fur, um, it automatically just kind of starts building up that texture anyway. You can kind of work in and around those details a little bit later on. But for now, we're just focusing mainly on the tonal value. We're just building up kind of shadows and colours in the kind of neck area. I think adding a really light layer over larger sections like this, for example, can just add like a really subtle tint to the whole thing and just like warm up that area. Um, but it's still quite subtle if you use it quite lightly. So you can kind of elongate some of these darker hairs just to merge them together so everything looks like it's kind of flowing and really soft and smooth. I'm also just going to add a subtle tint of the beige red, which has a slight kind of pinky tone to it. So again, it's going to help to warm up areas of that fur. If you look closely there's still quite a lot of that kind of grainy texture from the paper underneath um, probably because we've not added enough layers or squashed down the tooth of the paper enough so I'm going to go in now with the pink white which is a really pale kind of pink colour and it's also a luminance pencil which is also really good for blending so what I'm going to do is apply quite a hard pressure and just kind of smudge all that pigment underneath together in certain areas It'll help to kind of brighten up some areas and just really smooth that kind of grainy texture out, almost like eliminate it completely. Um, and you can kind of almost drag the pigment into each other. That's the beauty of like um, luminance pencils because they're so soft and because they're predominantly wax based. It literally just blends like a dream with those pigments underneath.
like that so you can see that it's really subtle but from afar it just kind of warms up some areas and that fur is now looking a lot smoother a lot more kind of sleek and soft all merging together so i'm also going to go in with the shade silver gray just to add a few more kind of cooler tones as well um, especially in the brightest parts now this has a really kind of subtle blue tint to it which is obviously a contrast between that warmer fur but i think particularly with like pale fur dogs or cats there is quite um, a mixture between those cool and warmer tones and that's kind of what you need to build up to create the kind of depth to paler fur especially in kind of white fur but obviously this is more cream um, so i'm just adding a touch especially to the center where that kind of darker fur is on the chest and again this will also help to kind of merge everything together blend everything together and help to reduce the kind of grainy texture from the paper underneath So you can see how subtle that is in some areas, but it just really helps to capture that lighting. You always want the edges of your portrait, like at the bottom and at the sides, to be as soft as you can. So it kind of almost like blends out into the paper, especially at the bottom. You don't really want a line where it stops. I think it looks a little bit more kind of professional if it just kind of merges gradually into that paper. Um, almost like the portrait's like emerging from the page. It's not like it's been stuck on. So something like that. I'm also gonna go in with the Burnt Umber, which is like a chocolatey brown color. And I'm gonna start building up some of those darker hair details in the fur. Start bringing back some of those shadows as well that have got covered slightly from those last couple of layers. So this is where you can really focus on that detail because we've now added quite a few layers um, so we can see that tonal value, see the structure of the body. Um, and obviously there's a clear contrast between those light and dark areas. So we just wanna start building up some of that detail now. Now, as you can see, this is really, really like a chocolatey warm brown, so you don't need much of it, but it's just a nice little addition um, to kind of warm up some areas of the fur.
So no more than that, I'd say you don't want the fur to look ginger. You just want to add that really subtle kind of chocolatey brown colour. I'm then going to go back in with that warm grey five just to darken the kind of centre of the chest. Just a little bit. And I'm applying a medium to hard pressure because we've added quite a few layers now so you might need to just press on a little bit harder in order for it to show up as well. So I'm just going to darken this kind of crease down here where that wrinkle is and also directly underneath the left hand side of the face just darken this little section as well And with a really light pressure, you can add some kind of subtle, darker fur details as well into that lighter fur. With the dark sepia again, I'm just going to darken that further. You kind of want to work around some of those paler hairs that you've already got in the fur um, that have just like automatically appeared from those constant back and forth motions with your pencil strokes.
So whilst I've still got this in my hand, I'm going to kind of rotate it till I've got the sharpest point of the tip, like on one of the sides, um, and just drag a line down like that to represent some of those darker whiskers. Now some of them are quite subtle, so you want to apply quite a light pressure, but always flick out at the end of each stroke to create that kind of wispy effect. And have some almost overlapping as well, so they look a little bit more natural. There's also some here just kind of pointing outwards like that. And also some at the other side. And then a few shorter ones all the way around. And also at the bottom of this chin. Now these whiskers will kind of show that the chin is above the neck, it's not all merging together because obviously the two different sections, but because they're quite similar colours it's very easy for them to kind of just blend together. So we want to make sure that we can definitely tell that that chin is above this neck chest area. So by having them whiskers kind of falling in front or on top of the chest, you know, it does give that impression. So something like that, you don't want to overdo it with the whiskers, just add a few subtle ones here and there and obviously get the main ones in at the side as well. So at this point, it's all really about just refining everything, adding in those extra kind of intricate details, um, adding any subtle colours that you might need to in certain areas, just touching everything up really, making it look as realistic as you can. You can even go back to certain areas and just add a few more little subtle hairs or details. Just touch up areas of the portrait. With the shade Nugget, you can add some more of those kind of subtle details in the fur. Now this again is kind of like a subtle light brown, so it's just going to feed into this fur that we've got down already really nicely. Just kind of merge together.
just going to darken this little bit here directly underneath the chin just looking a little bit too bright so I'm just using the warm grey five just to dull that down slightly and then the last step is using the craft knife slice tool now I think I've used this craft knife slice tool in every single part of this tutorial so far it just really adds that kind of extra realistic element that you can't really achieve just with the colour pencils alone. Um, especially for achieving that really kind of intricate detail because you can achieve such a fine line with this. And you can almost like draw back in those highlights, just pull out some of those brighter kind of hairs in and amongst the fur. And it just gives you that extra little bit of detail along with those kind of paler whiskers as well. Now this only works when you've got quite a few layers down. If you only had like three or four layers down, there'd obviously be nothing, no pigments kind of lift off the paper. Um, so obviously the more layers that you've got down, the better this tool works. So once you've finished off just perfecting all those little details and pulling them out of the fur, adding in those final extra little whiskers and highlights, then you're pretty much done. I'm quite happy with how it's turned out. I've been wanting to do a full length start to finish tutorial or split into parts on YouTube for quite a while. Um, just so if you are interested in joining my Patreon where I've got most of my content, um, you know, loads of focus tutorials, in-depth tutorials, materials videos, business tips, behind the scenes stuff, like everything's on there. So I just wanted to do this tutorial as like a taster really of what kind of stuff you can expect to find on my Patreon if you're interested in joining for, um, you know, a lot more kind of in-depth tutorials and stuff like that. Um, I also do critiques on there. So if you want to send me any work, I can give you feedback as well. So I'm just going to take this piece of paper off so you can see what I've got down so far for this commission. So obviously I've done the pug and the French Bulldog now and I've got one of the pugs on the left um, still to do. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this French Bulldog tutorial. Um, if you've done any work from this tutorial, I'd love to see it. So tag me in any of your posts that you put on social media. I'll leave the link to my Patreon below in the description and I'll also leave the reference photo link so you can work from that as well. Um, and yeah, thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you soon in the next one.